truth arise. Black devil don't hide, he can't hide from me. He might from the others. I've been employed to pull your ass out from the covers. You walk like you got hooves and talk like you're supposed to. Tricking my brothers into following you. Yo, potential energy is easily made kinetic. What's going on, everybody? It's Tony DeLarmy. Uh, thanks for tuning into a brand new episode of Not For Real. And on today's episode, man, um, I, I'll just be blunt with you guys. I want to share kind of a story with you and just kind of a, a realization that dawned on me this week as it pertains to Dumb Nigga Logic 101 and Raw and Cut and Unfiltered. And I'll just get straight to the point with that off the bat. Those two shows are finished. They're done. They're dead. Uh, they're never coming back. And the reason for that is this, right? And I'll start it off with this quote because it's a real profound quote. It's by J. Cole off the 2014 Forest Hills Drive album. I forgot what the name of the song is, but the quote has always stuck in my mind. And that is, and that quote is, the good news is, nigga, you came a long way. The bad news is, nigga, you went the wrong way. And for quite some time now, I was going the wrong way with this channel unknowingly upon the death or I should say murder of XXXTentacion it kind of sparked a, a change in me in which I put those two shows on hold but then recently this week after re-watching an old Dave Chappelle interview that he did with Oprah on his reasoning for leaving the Chappelle show it then made it all the more clear to me as to why I need to officially be done with my two shows that I was doing on this channel. In that interview with Oprah, Chappelle was giving, you know, a list of his reasons for why he stopped doing his show. But one of the main reasons that he stopped doing it was because it dawned on him that many of the jokes and skits on his show were socially irresponsible on multiple levels, but especially towards black people and the perception of black people. He speaks on this skit that he did uh, in the third season, which was the final season. Um, and that skit was a, a racially charged skit, as most of his skits were. And at the end of the skit, there was a white guy that was laughing as everybody else was but the the white guy on set was laughing a little too hard it was different he said it wasn't laugh he wasn't laughing at the fact that the skit was funny but Dave Chappelle said he knew and felt that he was actually just being laughed at on the basis of race. And with that awakening, you know, dawning on him, alongside with a a host of other reasons, he stopped doing the show. But one of the things that he made clear on that interview was that he didn't want to be a disappointment to black people through his comedy, or I should say a sketch comedy, being socially irresponsible because when you're making this content like when I was making mine uh, you're not really factoring in or at least I'll I'll just speak for myself now you're not factoring in all the ramifications of what these skits and what these shows mean to different people and how they digest it for me when I was making those shows It was simply me going, you know what? Let me speak on these things that are happening in hip-hop that I think are kind of ridiculous and silly and foolish. And hopefully if I do it in a funny way, which is entertaining, I can keep everyone's attention. But at the same time, sprinkle, for lack of better words, wokeness and socially consciousness within the videos. And hopefully they'll get the message. And when I say they, I mean black people. Hopefully my brothers will get the message and they'll watch these videos and go, man, you know what? This is stupid. Some of the things that we're doing here within hip hop and just within our culture, we got to cut this out. And for the most part, that message was well received. I'd say it's 50-50. 
you got half of the comments by young brothers that say, thanks, man. Like, this, this video is dope. This was great. We need this in the community. Brother, we need more videos like this. I appreciate what you're doing, and I see what you're doing. More power to you. Thank you. And then you have other brothers that see the video, and they're just salty about it because you're calling them out, and I'm just an old hater. And I can deal with that, and I expect that. What I didn't expect and what I didn't see is how other people outside of the culture, particularly white people, if I'm just going to be blunt and honest, could watch the video or could watch those videos and not just take them on the basis of, oh, this is entertaining and funny. But when I read a lot of these comments, I'm seeing that my videos were socially irresponsible to the effect that a white person who has very ignorant views on black people can now use my videos as justification for their ignorant thoughts, which then can manifest itself negatively towards us when it comes down to being hired for a job or looking for a promotion or even when you're being pulled over by a police officer. One who's walking around with the mindset that black people are just dumb. They're stupid. They're unintelligent. They don't want to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, so on and so forth. Could then get one of my videos online and say, hey, look at this guy, Tony DeLarmy. He's smart. I like him. Look at this. And they show it to their friends and they all laugh at it and laugh at us. And that's their proof for how dumb, stupid, and ignorant we all are. Me being the exception because essentially at this point now, I'm the coon. Why am I the coon? Because I'm the one that's poking fun at my own people, talking about how dumb and stupid we look. And for them, white people who have these ignorant thoughts, my video is their proof. And because I'm black and I'm pointing it out, that means that they're right in their thinking as well. And like Chappelle, I don't ever want to be a disappointment to my people by making socially irresponsible videos in that way. That was never my intention. And I could never live with the fact knowing that my videos can be used in that way. Like I said, I read some of these comments and it's just disturbing. When I'm looking at them and I see somebody goes, man, I'm white and I could never get away with saying this stuff. I'm so glad you're saying this and pointing it out. It's cringy. The amount of people that I see in the comment section, I see this one guy who's thumbnail. He looks like the the white guy in the Jordan Lucas, I'm not racist video. (laughs) And he's like, thanks, brother. Wow, you're smart. We need you to do more videos like this. This is great. In, in my head, I'm just like, no, man, nah, 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 nah. This, this isn't, this isn't for you like that. You know, for for those of you who aren't black that can take these videos on the basis of just sheer entertainment, just the comic value of it, that's great. But like I said before, the just the thought that anybody can take those videos and use it against us as a means to justify their ignorant notions and thoughts on us does not sit well with me at all whatsoever and with all that being said those two shows are dead in the casket six feet under you'll never see that again from me because i i can't live with myself knowing that i'm putting out socially irresponsible videos towards black people with myself being black i can't go out like that And with all this being said, I also expect for those that watch this particular video, you know, I expect a drop off, you know, I expect people to unsubscribe and to not watch my videos going forward. And that's cool with me. I can live with that because I'll even liken that to to Dave Chappelle again. You know, a lot of people thought he was crazy and, and stupid for walking away from 50 million. But at the end of the day, outside of a host of other reasons, he chose his integrity. 
as a man first. Like what I spoke on in the Meek Mill video. He's looking at himself in the mirror and saying, I'm not going to be taken advantage of and I'm not going to play myself. And I'm, I myself, I'm not being taken advantage of by anybody because I don't work with anybody. This channel is, is mine. I just I do what I do here. But in continuing to make those videos, I'm playing myself because I then become a disappointment to my people and I never want to do that. But I also know that when you put your principles and morals and your integrity first, it might take a little longer to get to where you're trying to go, but you'll get there eventually. And when you get there, it's that much better. Because when I liken it back to Chappelle, Chappelle turned down $50 million and walked away from that because he wouldn't be able to live with himself if he kept doing the Chappelle show. But then what? So maybe close to 10 years later, he eventually nets a deal with Netflix for, what was it, like $60 million? It might be even more than that. But we'll just stick to the $60 million. That's $10 million more than what he would have gotten had he continued doing the Chappelle show. He got his money eventually, but it took a little bit longer. But he still got his money. I want my subscribers to have my money eventually. <laughs> but now on the path that I'm currently on, and which is the, the the nest of videos that you see today, what's good and not for real. And there's going to be other videos that are coming in the future. I know that going this route that I'm going now, it's going to take a little bit longer to get those subscribers and then for me to be able to, you know, just flip that into monetary gain. It's going to be a minute. But when it comes, it'll be that much sweeter because I did it the right way. I held tight to my guns, if I use that phrase correctly. <laughs> but um, I say all that, man, and I hope that in watching this, somebody can get something out of this video. Maybe you can find some way or some place in your life or you can come to the understanding and the realization that I'm going the wrong way. And once you come to that point in that realization, you turn back around and go the way you're supposed to. It might be a little longer. The trip might take a little longer now to get to your desired destination. But like I've said now, like I think I'm going to say this for the third time. When you get to that desired destination, it's that much sweeter. It's that much greater because you did it the right way. And from this moment on forward, I plan on running this channel the right way. And if that takes a couple years before I get what I'm looking for out of it, so be it. I can live with that. Anyways, I'm your boy Tony and Laramie. I'm out of here. That's all I got for you today on Not For Real. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and all that good stuff. That's by default. You know that already. But if you stuck around this long... Please do me the biggest favor, like I said, all of my videos at the end, and text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That's TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That way you'll get a direct text notification from me whenever I drop a brand new video. That means more to me than you hitting the subscribe button. That's text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. I'm your boy Tony and Laramie. I ain't got no more talking. I'm out of here. Deuces.